Welcome back. As you know, we're here talking all about disruption, which of course, by our definition, is simply taking an idea that's been in place for some time and someone coming along and making it better. We are here with John Caroni, the CEO and founder of SafeMoon, which is doing that in the world of business. John, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So tell us what is, first of all, I love the name. What is SafeMoon? So SafeMoon is a human-based innovation company. Um, we build products and services with a uh, venture philanthropy business model always in mind. Um, and we just, uh, we're innovating in the, in the cryptocurrency and blockchain tech space. So where did the idea of SafeMoon come from? So there's a term in the uh, cryptocurrency space called, uh, it's basically to the moon. Um, and so safe moon is a play on words on, uh, on, on that. It's safely to the moon, which is more than just uh, talking about price action, um, as that's not our focus. It's talking about um, building things responsibly to get to the moon safely. So I've always been interested in, uh, in cryptocurrency but more on the tech side of things, more on the blockchain side of things and what that can actually do for the world. Um, by utilizing blockchain technology, we're able to increase efficiency of a lot of the systems uh, that are already in place today and a lot of technologies that are already in place today, whether it be uh, telecommunications, whether it be um, you know, uh, stores of value, um, whether it be sending messages. Uh, I've always been interested in what blockchain can do in those areas and being in an emerging industry, we're just barely beginning to scratch the surface of what blockchain can do. So you use terms, let's just set this straight first. Yeah. You know, there are terms like blockchain, metaverse, NFT. These are things that we talk about with the assumption that people know what we're talking about. Yeah. But for our audience's purposes, we don't know if they are you know, crypto enthusiasts or what you lovingly refer to as the crypto curious, which yeah. I appreciate because that's usually me. Um, <laughs> so if you don't mind, just give us a baseline of understanding about what we're hearing. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll start with NFTs. Uh, NFT stands for non-fungible token. And basically it's a unique identifier, unique identifier on, the, uh, on the blockchain you can akin it to something like a social security number or a debit card number or um, your car registration, your VIN number. Um, so it's a unique identifier on the blockchain. Now you can assign that unique identifier to pieces of art, to identifications. Um, I mean, you can assign it to a lot of different things. You know, We're just beginning to tap the surface of what NFTs can do. Uh, blockchain is just a, uh, a ledger, an immutable ledger um, the crypto curious, that term, uh, I usually define it as it's people who know what cryptocurrency is, but not what it can do, if that makes sense. It totally makes sense. Cause that's totally me. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, I totally, I totally understand that. And what about metaverse? Yeah. Metaverse, we're really just beginning to dive into what is the metaverse, you know, um, Right now, the definition is, is tied towards a virtual world in which you can live, you know, kind of like a Second Life, the video game. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably the closest thing I can think of in terms of a metaverse, but it's just a digital representation of our world. Um, and there's a lot of different flavors of it right now. Um, Facebook has one, or sorry, Meta has one. Um, you have companies like Decentraland, Sandbox, and they're all trying to represent the real world inside of the digital world. Um, What's the advantage? Well, there's a lot of different, a lot of different advantages. One of them is people already live in the digital space, uh, especially with the transition to uh, remote work um, during COVID-19 and all the lockdowns that took place and are taking place. There's been a transition into this digital world anyways. And the metaverse is just one step past, you know, Zoom. You know, now you can create your digital 3D avatar and interact with another individual inside of a, 3D world. So it's just a step past the, past the Zoom call. Got it. Well, um, we're ready for that, right? We've already yeah. mastered Zoom. I think most of us have mastered Zoom. So that's something we can all get behind. Before we go on any further, I'd like to know more about you. Like what's a little bit of, tell us a little bit about your history and how did you get to SafeMoon now? Uh, I grew up overseas, uh, Africa, Asia, Europe, the Caribbean. 
Um, went to college, was going to be a uh, EMT paramedic. Um, decided that's not what I want to do. Joined the military. Went to Korea, did some cool schools. That's when I really kind of uh, stumbled upon blockchain was during my time there. I was an intelligence analyst. Um, deployed to Afghanistan, came back, and then got out, put my uh, hat into hat into the ring of the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Um, did an import-export company, did a, a government contracting company. Um, didn't really enjoy either of those. And then I got really into uh, video games um, and, building, and building out video games. And one thing I learned was uh, the importance of narrative and story um, across, the, across the globe and being able to communicate uh, vision um, through storytelling, uh, which, you know, the crypto, uh, crypto world and the video game world kind of live hand in hand in, in a sense. Um, especially now with us diving into the metaverse. Um, and so it was an easy transition um, over to Safen when Safen kicked off in March of last year. Got it. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. Thank and you. secondly, who thought it would be a good idea to kick off a new and magnificent venture in the middle of a global pandemic? That, all, that question seems to rise to the top every time I talk to a startup. So how did you actually come to SafeMoon at that time? So it was, uh, I had um, some other founders that are no longer with the company, just like any startup. Um, it's very rare for all the founders to stay with the company throughout the entire time. People have differences of what they want to do. It's not what they signed up for, time commitments, et cetera. Um, so, you know, I was, I was brought on to run the business and actually build this out. Um, it was launched in March, uh, quickly grew to, um, uh, a very large market cap. And then uh, by April, we were at a multi-billion dollar market cap. And I mean, it was just kind of a, it's a, it's a complicated thing. Basically, uh, you know, luck favors the prepared mind. Um, and there was an opportunity and I, we saw it and we jumped. Um, you know, we could have been like a lot of other cryptocurrencies or a lot of other tokens that uh, come out on the Binance smart chain where it's hype, the hype dies out. And so does the, uh, the vision, the company, and the team. We, we set out for something more sustainable, safely to the moon, safe moon, um, and created the uh, venture philanthropy business model um, through the use of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, um, and then tying those together to existing industries. So what, what are, let's talk about the projects that are underway, yeah. because the safe moon vision literally could fill us from here to the moon. So <laughs> explain how this venture of philanthropy, this whole process is actually new and different and how you are building it. Well, I think it's new and different um, in the uh, cryptocurrency space and the blockchain space, um, but it's not necessarily 100% new. Uh, venture philanthropy is basically um, good deeds or good projects or uh, um, humanitarian efforts with a ROI. You know, we need that ROI to be sustainable um, so we can continue to innovate, continue to build products and technology that help humanity. So that's, that's kind of what a venture, venture philanthropy business model is. It's uh, doing good with an ROI. And so what are some of the things that you're currently, you have going underway that are going to build out this ecosystem? Well, if we're talking about... Um, sustainability, the first thing you have to have is have a uh, sustainable company. So it's creating the solid foundations from the team, from the technology you use to uh, locations across the globe, whether you're um, all remote, some remote, um, it's building that solid foundation underneath you. And then it's evolving that foundation up and up and up. So that's the first thing we started off with uh, back in September. Um, so one of the products that we're doing is renewable energy. Um, we utilize nanotechnology to increase the efficiency, and then we tie that into blockchain. So you have this ecosystem that begins to form um, around different sectors. With SafeMoon, because we have such a quick and fast and efficient development cycle, um, our product is the SafeMoon ecosystem um, with the wallet, the, the token, the wind turbines, um, some of the stuff we're doing in uh, Web3 mesh networks, um, those are all I would consider features of our product, which is the SafeMoon ecosystem. Um, and what, what, is, what do those things do? One, they bridge communities across the globe. You know, blockchain doesn't know borders, and it allows for a, an easier free flow of information 
And uh, even down to, even with e-commerce, it allows for people in um, Sudan to transact with people in uh, California. So it's connecting uh, humans, it's connecting people together through the use of blockchain and through the use of uh, various different technologies around the industry, evolving that a step further um, to create more change. And so it, it sounds like it's, a peep, it's an exercise in getting people behind the idea of doing good in the world. Would that be a good summation? Yeah, yeah, and you know we have we do have a lot of uh, people behind us. Um, I've heard you, know, you have what you call the safe. I'm sorry, it's such a good term, the safe yeah. moon army. I think everybody would like to have their own army. How do you, how do you do that? Um, so the safe moon army uh, is a award winning community. We won a, uh, a community of the year award at AIBC in Malta uh, this year. No, exactly. sorry, last year. We're in 2022. Um, we last year. Um, but no, it's a community that's uh, behind our vision, not just our token, but also behind our vision and what we want to do as a company um, and what we're doing in the blockchain space. So we already do have the support. It's rather large. We have 1.3 million followers on Twitter, uh, hundreds of thousands across Discord and Reddit. Um, and then, you know, if we extend the safe and army out further, we have um, 1. almost 1.1 million users on the safe moon wallet. So people have actually seen the benefit, well, seen the value, ultimately are interested in participating and creating the benefit. So they've come along for your ride. That's, yes. that's what it is. And in that case though, while you're building, what's, what's next? I mean, really, what can we expect to see next from SafeMoon? Yeah, so I'll kind of touch on the, uh, the products that we have uh, publicly released that are gonna be happening here in this year. Uh, Safe and Connect, which is a robust system that kind of ties a lot. It's the uh, it's the hub that ties a lot of our different products together. Um, we have our NFT line dropping. Uh, that was a request from our uh, our community because Safe is a community driven uh, company as well. We get direct feedback from our users. Um, we have our point of sale system. You know, we focus on three pillars here at Safe Moon: accessibility, quality, and security. And that's kind of like how we guide ourselves and what features we add. Um, and where we evolve. So with, with SafeMoon, uh, sorry, with the point of sale system, uh, it helps with the accessibility pillar. You know, I go to a lot of merchants or I talk to e-commerce providers or e-commerce people and two things happen. One, they say crypto is too difficult to deal with uh, or number two, they do take crypto because they understand it, but they're uh, either the accounting firm they work with or their accounting department um, gets really upset and says, hey, we don't have an invoice. We don't have anything else tied to this transaction. So our point of sale system uh, aims to make it more accessible for our business to business partners. Our Safe Moon Connect makes it more accessible or makes it easier to access those business to business partners for our users. Um, and that's just one, one little feature. Uh, we're coming out with the Safe Moon debit card, which allows you to spend uh, the cryptocurrency uh, within the Safe Moon wallet. And on the more boring side of things, um, some people like us, some people don't. We're uh, going through a lot of the compliance and regulatory checklists through this year so we can release the Safe Moon centralized exchange. Wow. It sounds like you guys are young and busy. So <laughs> you, you're definitely uh, not waiting for stuff to happen. And so I'm sure you have measures for your own success. What, what constitutes success for Safe Moon? Well, uh, so su measuring success by milestones, I think is very, uh, we're play Safe Moon plays an infinite game while a lot of other companies play a finite game. So for us, I define success um, through, is our evolution as a company, as a brand, um, as a technology stagnant? If it's continuing to evolve and it's not stagnant, that's successful for us. That's success to us. Perfect. And how can our viewers learn more, get involved, you know, kind of uh, just really dig into Safe Moon as I hope and know they will. Yeah, so you can go to safemoon.net. Um, we have a lot of information on there uh, and that'll help guide you to our Discord as well as our Twitter. So Safe Moon, we're verified on Twitter. Um, if you go there to those sources, it'll guide you to the rest of uh, the, the information that's available on Safe Moon. Perfect, John, is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers? Uh, thanks for having me on and listening. Appreciate the time. It is our pleasure, and I know our viewers are going to be very interested to learn more. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back.